a lot of tropical moisture flowing up from the Gulf. And we've got rain coming down as I record this. Anyway, let's take a look at the Extreme Forecast Index. This is a statistical product from the European model. And heat up in the northwest and the western Canadian region and in the northeastern U.S. And down around New Mexico, cold with above average precip. We're not expecting much change for tomorrow. For Thursday, the heat shifts into Alberta and Saskatchewan and into Manitoba. Some rain showing up in the Midwest around the Ohio River Valley. For Friday, the rain shifts into Tennessee, northern Mississippi and Alabama. Some windy conditions on the North Carolina coast. For Saturday, looks rainy along the Gulf Coast in the southeastern U.S. and cooler conditions in the east, central, and central U.S. And for the 4th of July, looks mild across much of the country, except along the northern border, the Dakotas, Idaho, and parts of the Pacific Northwest. The surface analysis this afternoon looks pretty quiet. The Bermuda High extending onto the Carolinas coast right there. And we've got the remnants of Tropical Storm Danny moving into Georgia and Alabama. Have an inverted trough across Oklahoma and Texas, and that's associated with a lot of upslope and easterly flow moving into New Mexico and West Texas, bringing a lot of precip and cooler conditions to that region. We've also got this polar front moving into the Great Lakes, a little push of warm air around Minneapolis, 81 degrees there. And east of there, it looks a little bit cooler ahead of that front. Out in the northwestern states, it is warm once again. We're going to take a look at the updated temperatures in a minute. But there's that heat low around the Pasco Yakima area. And on this particular chart, the hot, hottest temperature I'm seeing looks like 109 there at OMAC. And we're expecting another possibility of a record breaker up in Canada. And then things should start quieting down. The southwest monsoon in full force in New Mexico, the state almost completely covered by convection and debris clouds. Arizona is still waiting on the bulk of that monsoon flow to get there, but it's certainly intruded about 100 miles into the eastern counties right there. You can see some extensive cumulus across the valleys extending up into the Mogollon Rim and northeastern Arizona. But the true litmus test is going to be the dew points. Let's see what those are doing. To call this a true monsoon, we need to have the dew points up around 55 or above that. And we're doing that around Casa Grande right there, Safford, of course. But the other areas of Arizona still falling a little bit beneath that. So there's where we are currently with the dew points and it does look like it bulks up towards uh, tomorrow into the end of the week, a few surges coming into the region. So we've got multiple opportunities here for showers and thunderstorms, including the southwest part of the state. And you can see those dew points there around Yuma, up near 65. And the soundings, of course, let's take this back to Saturday. And there's a sounding for Gila Bend there. The storms are still going to be a little bit high based, but it does look like we have ample moisture and instability to support those. And yeah, Oregon. Yesterday, Portland reached 115 to set their all time record. However, the heat wave will be tempered today. And we do have some forest fires rearing their heads along the Oregon-California border. There's a look at those forecast temperatures for this afternoon. 116 at Pendleton, 117 at Pasco, and Portland coming down to 93. They started out this morning in the low 60s. Here's how things are looking at 1 p.m. Still a lot of problems in the high deserts. We've got 112 there at Pendleton. 109 at Yakima, however, west of the Cascades, much cooler, 85 at Portland, 77 at Seattle, and 76 at Bellingham. Taking a look up in Canada there, Kamloops up at 106. 
However, it still looks like a chance for them to come up into the 110s. And we'll zoom that out a bit. We can see that heat coming into Alberta. I think that's Valley View or Grand Prairie. 99 degrees there. 95, Fort St. John. That's up the Alaska Highway to Fort Nelson where it's 88. And we've got mid 80s showing up in the Northwest Territories, 86 there at Fort Simpson. And we're taking a look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity for this afternoon. That's the cause of all our misery right there. Cut off high. 595 decimeters over far southeastern British Columbia. And it's starting to be broken down by this trough and this cutoff low off the Oregon coast. That's that trough that's kind of eating into the west side of that ridge. And let's put it into motion and see what's in store. That little cutoff low off the Oregon coast moves north, kind of folds itself into that ridge and breaks it down. The ridge itself kicks out into the Canadian prairies, centered over Saskatchewan by tomorrow. We can see that the main band of the polar front jet running about like that, so it's well up in Canada, except for a segment in the Great Lakes. And you can see how weak the flow is across much of the U.S. Now we do have slight indications of some ridging in Texas. That looks like a weak high starting to set up that may start drying things out a bit. Going into Friday and Saturday, still hanging onto that ridge in the Dakotas up to Manitoba. And looking out towards the west, looks pretty quiet, but I can still see some evidence of a blocking pattern along the west coast. Got this cutoff low, we've got this trough right there, and we've got this ridge. So that right there is a block in itself, and then we've got that low down to the south. So that may kind of keep the pattern locked up there on the west coast. And then just running things forward. Not much change over the next week or so. We can see a subtropical high starting to get established in the southwestern U.S. just after the weekend, so I think we're going to be seeing the temperatures coming up in Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and California next week. Got this trough here moving through the north-central U.S. into the Midwest, so increased chances of rain once again for that area right there. Not sure if that's going to come all the way down to Texas. I don't see a whole lot of ridging across the state, so we could see a few outflow boundaries and convective complexes working south of I-44, maybe towards Arkansas and North Texas around this time next week. And after that, some amplification of the pattern. You can see how strong that high gets there, so if that actually pans out, by the end of next week, could see some very hot temperatures in the southwestern U.S. Very deep low in the Great Lakes and pretty good jet, bringing some energy, some cooler weather into the Midwest. Now, of course, the other side of the story is precipitable water. We look at this pretty heavily in the summertime. And what we're showing here is the anomaly. So all the green areas are going to be above the climatological normals, and all the brown areas are drier than we typically see it. So obviously quite a conveyor belt of moisture coming northward up I-35 and up into the Great Lakes. So let's see how things evolve. Lots of moisture coming into West Texas and into New Mexico, and also the remains of Tropical Storm Enrique moving up the Gulf of California into Arizona. So Arizona is going to get hit with kind of a double whammy of moisture, some from the east and some from the south. You can see how much moisture ends up in that area by Friday, running about an inch over the typical amounts. So good potential for flooding flash flooding in the deserts with a few of those storms. And some more cold air in dry conditions coming into the Midwest behind another high pressure area. This is a big old ridge and that'll push south into the southern U.S. That'll send another boundary down into Texas and 
wherever the leading edge of that boundary is, that could be a favorable area for convection during the daytime. But back behind it looks fairly dry. And there it is, lots of dry air all the way down to the Gulf Coast by the 4th. And that's going to actually feel pretty nice outside. Any of you who have outdoor plans, it's going to be kind of mild and dry. That's going to be perfect weather for being outside. Not so much in the Rockies. A lot of problems there with showers. And at least a lot of that should shut down after dark. And there's how things evolve into next week. Looks like another push of cold air coming south. A lot of moisture hanging back across the southern Rockies into the southwestern U.S. And then we're going to start seeing that ridge building in. Remember that upper level high in this region here. So that's going to probably have mostly an effect on Utah and Nevada. But still a lot of moisture in place. So we're going to see a lot of convective debris. That may help mitigate some of those hot temperatures, especially south of I-15, south of the canyons could be quite hot on the other hand up in this area here later next week. Taking a look at Europe, the Czech Republic hit by tornadoes last week and we are seeing a little bit of a similar picture. You can see that band right there of thickness, uh, kind of a gradient in there of thickness lines and that's indicative of a jet running across Italy and the northern Mediterranean. And it also implies the existence of a front, kind of like that. And the dew points in the Czech Republic running about 17 to 18 Celsius, which is going to be low to mid 60s. And we can take a look at the German radar in the eastern part of the country. And we've got a MCS moving southwest to northeast, ingesting that very rich air mass up to the northeast over parts of Poland and the Northern Czech Republic. So kind of a rare look. And you can see that trailing stratiform region back behind that. And one last look in the Pacific Northwest, looking at the 2 p.m. Pacific data. We've got 113 again at Lytton, so they may be coming up to 115 or above later. 113 at OMAC, they need 114 to break the all-time record. And we've got 114 there at Pendleton. So the heat continues mostly east of the Cascades. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. And hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.